Hey, it's Dr. Dunaway here with Cairo Strength, and today we're going to talk about the second installment of the Diastasis Recti Recovery Series, and today's all about the pelvic floor. And what do I mean by pelvic floor? If you feel these bones right here, that's called your ilium, if I were to take my torso completely off, take out all the insides, and look down into that pelvic bowl, what you'll see on the floor is a bunch of muscles. They kind of attach to this sacrum here, they attach all the way around, and they make the floor of your core. The roof being the diaphragm. And so there should be a good relationship between the pressure that the diaphragm creates whenever you brace your core and the ability of this floor to kind of buttress and support that pressure to be able to stabilize the pelvis and the lumbar spine. Now, if you have any issues or weaknesses in the pelvic floor, that's going to cause things like incontinence. And you will see um, in, the, in the past, there's always been a, a prescription of an exercise called Kegels. And what a Kegel is, Kegel, however you want to pronounce it, um, there is a contraction of the pelvic floor for three seconds, five seconds, and the relaxation. A contraction and a relaxation. Now, to get an idea of what that contraction feels like, often the cue is pretend like you're trying to stop a stream of urine and you're going to use those muscles, trying to isolate those muscles. So there's not a whole lot of um, in uh, recruitment of other abdominal musculature. And you're trying to isolate that pelvic floor. And in the literature, it's been shown either um, like up to five Kegels to 200 Kegels a day doing sets of 10 several times throughout the day. Now, the problem with this, and the reason the literature isn't very uh, supportive of Kegels, and it's kind of all over the place, depending on what, which literature you read, the problem is that's an isolation exercise. And in the context of movement, in the context of jumping or running, there's a lot of things going on around the torso and around the pelvis. You're never gonna fix a shoulder by just doing bicep curls. The bicep does, do, does have a stability um, component to the shoulder here because it comes up in front of the shoulder. Just like the pelvic floor musculature has its role in making everything else stable. But what happens is when you contract a muscle over and over again, pretend like these are the fibers of a muscle. My fingers are kind of interlaced. If I contract those all the way, that would resemble a tight muscle. Now, if that tight muscle has not, it doesn't have a whole lot of room to contract. So although it's tighter, it's not any more stronger. It actually gets weaker if it's continuing to be too tightened too often. So if you're only doing Kegels, what's going on is those, those muscles attach to the sacrum and the pelvic bowl and they actually pull the sacrum. If my sacrum's sitting here like this in my body, it actually pulls the sacrum forward a little bit creating tension in the pelvic floor, which can help incontinence. Uh, but the problem is that pelvic floor now is dysfunctional because it can't really contract or relax like a normal musculature. You have to be working on the backside of that sacrum and pelvis to be able to have a good relationship between the pelvic floor muscles that pull the sacrum forward and the gluteal muscles which pull the sacrum back. There needs to be a good yin and yang. You can't just lock this down, lock this down, lock this down and expect it to function properly. So if we're trying to work the pelvic floor, which is really important post-pregnancy, really important for any core dysfunction, we have got to be able to work Kegels is, is a good one. We kind of talked about how to do that, but also these gluteal muscles back here. Remember, everything starts with a good core brace and breathing pattern, which we talked about in the first video. But some real simple exercises here. Um, if we're trying to isolate the glutes, we can do a modified glute bridge. So instead of coming up just like this, I'll go on the outside of my feet, let my knees fall down so my knees are opened up, bring the heels towards the butt a little bit, start with a good brace, make sure I'm not moving into posterior tilt here, make sure I'm not arching my back. So what I don't want in a glute bridge is I don't want the butt to peel off the table. I want everything to rise off the table at the same time. And again, do a, a five second hold and then come down slowly, maintaining a good brace the entire time, being able to breathe in that belly the entire time, and it may nice and tight while we work those glutes. So if the another good one, that you can kind of load up and one that ends up being a better stretching exercise is an exercise called a hip thrust. So I'm gonna elevate my torso here on this bench and all I'm gonna do, it'll be just like a glute bridge and I can put weight on here, I can put a barbell, I can put dumbbells. All I do is drive myself up, again, locked in, keep my torso nice and tight, maintain a neutral spine so I'm not dropping into extension, locking in and coming up. So all those are just, two ways that you can 
increase the activation of the glutes and in combination with the Kegels, in combination with the posterior chain or the gluteal drive, and then take into account the good posture with the good uh, uh, rib placement and pelvic placement with your breathing and bracing, that will be a really good way to get a, a really good routine to put in place to fix dysfunctions in the pelvic floor, which will lead to improvement overall of that diastasis recti.